Insert a montage of unoriginal Norfolk Southern memes here. Set the extended version of No Tengo Dinero from Regira. After looking at the Pennsylvania Railroad S1, GT3 gas turbine, Caledonian Railway 600 class and several other engines earlier in the year, I wanted to revisit another locomotive add-on in TS Classic. This time, I'll be looking at a curious beast from the Norfolk Southern stable. This is my two cents on the GP33 Eco, with work on the review starting in September 2023 before getting put on hold for nine months. Between January 2015 and April 2016, Norfolk Southern built 28 GP33 Eco locomotives at their Juniata shops in Altoona, Pennsylvania. The locomotives were rebuilt from old ex-Southern Railway High Hood GP50s, while an additional pair, numbers 4728 and 4729, were rebuilt from ex-Penn Central GP38-2s in 2021. Originally numbered from 4700 to 4729, the GP33 Ecos have recently been renumbered into the 6700 series in order to make way for new AC44C6Ms, which are actually rebuilt C40-9, C40-9W, or C44-9W locomotives. Speaking of the C40-9W, we have that very same locomotive in TS Classic. In real life, locomotive number 9195 has since been rebuilt as AC44C6M number 4421, not to be confused with DC4421. And as far as I know, the closest we've got to a standard cab-9 in TS Classic is the C40-8. The less said about this thing, the better. Although the GP33 Ecos are at least 42 years old, you'd be forgiven for thinking that's their brand new locomotives. They feature EM2000 microprocessors like the UK's Class 66, as well as EPA Tier 3 compliant variants of the EMD710 series Prime Mover, producing 3000 horsepower. The original alternators from the GP50s were retained, and the GP33 Ecos equipped with distinctive flared radiators that result in the back end resembling certain variants of the EMD SD70. As for the RP-M4C, this is quite a bizarre contraption. Although she looks like a conventional locomotive, and she still has traction motors, she doesn't have a prime mover, and consequently looks a little weird without the radiators or roof fans. According to ns-9.com, Norfolk Southern has 36 of these things, either rebuilt from GP50s or built on brand new frames from 2023 to 2021. The slugs traction motors get their power from the so-called mother unit, with the idea being to increase the locomotive's tractive effort at low speed with reduced emissions compared to what you'd get from two conventional locomotives. You'll often see a mother and slug combination shunting wagons in a big yard, and the GP33 Ecos are equipped for remote control operation. Released on Steam in May 2020, this locomotive wasn't developed by Dovetail Games, but rather a third-party developer that I've never heard of, called Travel by Train. Personally, I think this pack is simply not worth the normal asking price of $24.79 NZD, because all you get is the GP33 Eco locomotive and RP-M4C slug in this distinctive black and two-tone green livery. Incidentally, Travel by Train also made the High Hood NS GP50, so we can see how the GP33 Eco looked prior to her rebuild without having to use real photographs.
No rolling stock is provided with the GP33 Eco, and the only other thing this add-on includes is a trio of scenarios for Dovetail's Norfolk Southern inline route, with one of them being split into two parts. I don't know how often they would run through Salisbury, North Carolina in real life, if at all, but from what I gather, they can often be found in Chicago, Illinois, Atlanta, Georgia, or Buffalo, New York, but please correct me if I'm wrong. For reference, the inline route runs for only 29 miles, or 46.6 kilometers, from Salisbury to Halls Ferry in the state of North Carolina. On the motive power scene, the base route only includes two locomotives, and we've already had both of them with previous add-ons. These two are the EMD GP38-2 and GP40-2. Curiously, the pack also includes the High Hood GP38-2 variants that originally came from the Southern Railway. Not the Southern Railway in England, mind. Mind you, it would be pretty funny to see one of these things in Malachite Green. Anyway, I think this route feels a bit like a short line, even though it's got locomotives from a Class 1 railroad. On first glance, these models don't look too bad, especially when compared to the ancient Kuju era ES44 AC, and I'll give TBT credit for at least modelling an unusual prototype, but the textures on the model just look a bit flat. Hell, the black parts even look a bit fuzzy up close. At least the handbrake wheel looks much better than the one on TBT's SD70 ACU model. The one on that engine just looked like someone had stolen and crudely repurposed the steering wheel from Mr. Bean's car. Another thing I like on the GP33 Eco is the horn sound. Someone's bound to correct me if I'm wrong, but to me, it sounds like a Nathan K5LA. Meanwhile, the bell is triggered automatically whenever you blast the horn, and it keeps ringing for at least 20 seconds before it shuts itself off. I don't know whether or not the continuous ringing is realistic, but what I do know is that the real GP33 Ecos actually have e-bells. For whatever reason, they've got an inaccurate steel bell sound in-game. As for the prime mover sounds, these are rather weird, in the sense that the external and internal sounds don't match at all. I swear the engine sound heard in the cab is recycled from the EMD SD70M that comes with Sherman Hill and it also appears on the SD70 ACE. I wouldn't have thought that a GP33 Eco would sound all that similar to, let alone exactly like, an SD70M or SD70 ACE. I noticed that the headlights are unrealistically bright, and there's this weird semicircle outline that makes part of the exhaust cloud transparent. The headlight beam is also just a flat texture that's hovering in front of the actual headlight model. There's something strange about the colour of the wheels. It's like a weird washed out brown or burgundy. And I don't know about you, but to me, the couplers between the locomotive and slug look weirdly stretched out. The textures inside the cab aren't very good, at least in my opinion. For instance, the shade of brown used on the control stand makes it look more like a biscuit or chocolate cake than anything else, especially around the back and it doesn't help that there's no proper shading. And I don't particularly like this weird outline around the edge of the gauges, but I think the weirdest part of the cab has nothing to do with the quality of the actual add-on, but rather, this strange angled windshield in the middle. If we have a butcher's in the class 205 thumper, we can see just how good the cab textures in this game can be, especially when compared to the GP33 Eco. And the 205 model was actually released for the game long before the rebuilt GP50.
Apart from the opening cab windows and doors, there isn't really much in the way of, even remotely unique features on the GP33 Eco and RP-M4C, especially when compared to the Class 37 that Armstrong Powerhouse made in collaboration with Master Key Simulations. As for the physics, I don't know how realistic they are because I'm not familiar with the real locomotive. At the very least, I don't think the GP33 Eco and RP-M4C shoot off like a rocket, even when they're running light engine. The locomotive also has the so-called advanced brakes, similar to the third gen Union Pacific gas turbine that comes with Sherman Hill, and even the New Zealand Railway's DJ class diesel locomotive on the Midland line. Although a feature like this seems out of place on a locomotive this basic. She's got a fairly strong plume of exhaust even when she's idling, not something I would expect from an EPA Tier 3 compliance locomotive. I got this error message when I tried loading one of the default scenarios on the inline. I don't understand what it means, but I do know that it can be bypassed by pressing F2 and hitting save. The scenario itself, called 7 o'clock, is very basic. You start around 0.68 miles northeast of Yadkin Junction with 14 boxcars behind the locomotives. All you have to do is drive along to Salisbury Yard uncouple the wagons, and park your locomotives in another siding. As an aside, I noticed that, for whatever reason, that boxcar model has got UP lettering at both ends, despite having Norfolk Southern branding on the sides. Currently, there are only two scenarios for the GP33 Eco on the Steam Workshop. One takes place on the Aurora to Chicago route, while the other is on New Jersey Transit's Morristown line. I can understand why almost no one has made workshop scenarios for this thing, not just because of the general lack of suitable routes, especially from the Atlanta area, but also because the locomotive just isn't all that good, let alone mediocre. If you're after some good Norfolk Southern locomotives to drive in TS Classic, I honestly don't know which ones to recommend because the ones I've tried are all pretty mediocre. But I can tell you about one add-on you should avoid, Dovetail's rendition of the General Electric C40-8 in NS colours. I wrote a review on Steam for this thing ages ago, and my views on her haven't really changed since then. Despite the add-on's flaws, I would still recommend the GP33 Eco to anyone who's looking for something a bit out of the ordinary while not being too fussed about whether or not the locomotive is advanced, or if you just happen to like Norfolk Southern's rebuilt locomotives in general. Speaking of which, we've also got the SD60E in CS Classic, and I wouldn't mind seeing an AC44C6M, AC44C6CF, SD40E, or SD70ACC made for the game.